In this quick tutorial, we're going to look at a simple way to enhance a mouse over interaction. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. So we have our character. And if we look at the character states, we can see there's a character, a one, two, three. So basically the interaction is set up that when I mouse over this button, it's going to go to one, two to two, three to three. So I'm going to see this change. Now, when we look at the trigger itself, you'll see set the state of character one to one when the user hovers over tab one. So let's go ahead and preview this and see what happens. So it's doing exactly what you want it to do. Let's go from one to three. Now, this is one of those interaction types that can be a little bit frustrating or seem herky-jerky uh, depending on the type of interaction that you're building. But if you build something like this with a lot of mouse overs, this tip may come in handy. So you'll notice I'm in the normal state and I'm going to go to one. And when I leave one, it's going to go back to normal and then go to two, back to normal, three. So if I'm going to three and then to one, right? Um, it's probably not too bad this way, but if I'm mousing this way, it's just you kind of get that herky jerkiness in there. So I see this quite a bit when we're looking at examples in the community. Well, there's an easy way to fix this. I think this makes this type of interaction a little bit smoother. What we want to do is we want to keep it on one until you have a trigger that changes the state. So right now it's just going back because it's set to restore to its initial state. So it's going to go back. We want to keep it on one until I select something different. So let's go ahead and look at the trigger. This is a pretty easy fix. So we look at the trigger here, you can see it's going to change the state uh, when the mouse is hovered over. And then you can see this restore previous state when the user hovers out. So if you're not familiar with Storyline, essentially when you hover in or over this object, it's going to change it to state one. And when you're away from that object or out of the object, it's going to change it back to its uh, previous state, right? So let's go ahead and hit uh, this button. We're going to deselect it. And we're going to do that on all of these triggers here. We'll deselect that one. And we'll deselect this one. And this is kind of a matter of preference. So it's a subjective thing. But if we look at it, I think this offers a smoother interaction. So it's just going to stay on that state until I give it another reason to change the state. I think that's much smoother than if I See, it's not jumping back to the normal state uh, when I'm working with that. So I think this is a smoother way uh, to do this type of interaction. It's subjective. I think it's smoother. It kind of makes sense. It definitely removes some of that herky-jerkiness. Again, depends on the type of interaction you're building. But if you're doing a mouse over and you want to avoid that, this is one way to do that. Hopefully that helps.